Now I know my audience, y'all, are aspiring software developers or current software developers, so I know you've come across a video titled A Day in the Life of a Software Engineer. YouTube is absolutely plastered with them. Eating, typing, eating, meeting, eating. I don't know why they eat so much, but I've made my fair share of day in the life of a software engineer, even day in the life of a computer science student, and plenty of others have done the same as what I tried to do and showed you the actual day and some of the actual work of a software engineer instead of just what is being done. Just typing is a lot different than the actual work that is getting done as a software engineer. But regardless of what they showed you, every single one had something in common, and that is this. They're all taking place inside at a computer, and that is the first realization I want you to make. As a software engineer, for most of your life, you're going to be inside sitting at a computer. Now, personally, I don't see that being most suitable for most humans. We, I think we weren't made to be sitting at a desk for eight hours a day. So just out the gate, if that's something that doesn't sound too appetizing to you, then you may wanna take a deeper look into the potential career path that you're currently looking at as a software engineer. And that's what we're doing in this video, looking at the hard truths of being a software engineer, what it takes, and not just the highlight reel. So let's get started. Most of the experiences you see are from software engineers on YouTube sharing their day, but that is a biased point of view. They're entertainers. They want you to watch the entire video. Think about it. It is a lot easier to sit down and watch an hour long movie that has been directed and filmed and has a story throughout rather than sitting down and watching an hour long lecture. Can we agree on that? And people who want to share their experience want you to be captivated by their day. They want you to watch the video as long as they can get you to watch the video. Because the whole idea with a lot of these channels, especially on YouTube, whether it be software engineer or not, the whole idea is for them to, or for you to forget about the entire outside world and focus on their video, watch their video in its entirety, be consumed by it, be in, entertained by it. And well, that is the main goal. Whether it is helping you out or educating you, that is the goal. I only bring this up because it's a highlight reel at best or misinforming you at worst. So don't look at these videos and think that's exactly how it is because you can't see into the minds of these individuals. They aren't just typing aimlessly on a keyboard. They're deep in thought trying to figure out the solution to the task at hand and then doing research and implementing that solution in code. And in their meetings, they're not just shooting the breeze with the coworkers. They're being told that the entire week's worth of work before is completely worthless because the client decided to go another route and they don't want that feature implemented anymore. Or you're being told that your task was done incorrectly so now you have to redo it and those meetings are never fun. But you know, it's not all bad. Sometimes you are just shooting the breeze with your coworkers and discussing what to do next. And plenty of the things that I mentioned in this video may be see, uh, seen as negative or, or, or whatever it may be or it may appear that I'm trying to discourage some individuals from becoming software engineers. No, I'm trying to show you the reality of what it's like to be a software engineer, not just the good thing. So if I do focus on things that are a little bit more negative, don't see that the majority of the job is negative. I'm just trying to counteract all of the positive and all of the good things, the highlight reel that people are putting out there, but neglecting to do so for the bad thing. Because you need to understand that in any job, especially this job, there's a give and a take, good and bad. Which brings us to the everlasting question, especially staying on topic when it comes to software engineering YouTubers, like myself, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not calling anyone out in particular, I am a software engineer and computer science YouTuber just like everyone else and I made the same videos. Because the everlasting question really contradicts how a lot of these people portray their day as being always good, always positive, always fun, but most of these YouTubers who display it like that end up quitting their full-time software engineering job to do YouTube full-time. Well, if it is all butterflies and rainbows on the software engineering side of that, then why do they quit that job? I know why, I've done it. But for me, it may be a little bit different than most. So I've always wanted to work for myself. If I never discovered YouTube, I'd probably be freelancing. So for me, it wasn't always about what I was doing as long as I could do something that I enjoyed and work for myself. 
Many of these individuals probably shared the same sentiment. After all, they did start a YouTube channel for a reason. That reason could be because they thought it was fun, because they wanted to help people out, or because they saw it leading to their financial freedom. Whatever it may be, they saw this as being part of their future. But also, because if they truly enjoyed coding, this was a way for them to make a living, but also be able to work on their own projects. Which brings me to one of the biggest points of this video, which I feel like people never talk about. That is working as a professional software engineer is working for someone else's company, working on someone else's idea. You may love the idea, you may love working on that app, but you never have the final say on what features are implemented or even exactly how it looks or the overall growth of the company and where that app will be in five years. For lack of a better term, you're very much a code monkey being told what to do and how to do it with very little creative freedom. Some creative freedom, but very little. I personally can't work that way, but for some people that may be their cup of tea. You need that direction, you need that structure. So this may be perfect for you. I know people who thrive on not completing the overall idea or worrying about the overall app, but solving the task at hand. Each individual task is like a new challenge for them and that is what gets them going in the morning. They know that they get to work on this task, that task, and that task. They don't wor have to worry about the growth of the company or the growth of the app or the user interface. They are a back-end developer and all they have to worry about are these tasks today and that's basically it. There really is a luxury in that if you are wired that way, but if you are someone who got into development because you wanted to create your own apps, you wanted to make your ideas a reality, then it gets a little bit dicey there. But to sum it all up, many people get into coding to make their ideas a reality. It starts off as a hobby, but it becomes a job once you make it your job. The old adage says, do what you enjoy and you'll never work a day in your life, but making something your job that you do enjoy will oftentimes take the enjoyment out of it. So what is an actual day in the life of a software engineer? Well, this will vary from company to company, team to team, person to person, but the overall structure is typically the same. You have stand up about every day. This is when you get together with your team. You talk about what you did since the last stand up, any roadblocks that you're facing and what you plan to do next. Now, when you accomplish everything that you set out to do the day before, your confidence is through the roof. You're a genius programmer and you just want to Tell everyone what you did in that stand-up and you love it. However, there's a flip side to this coin. If you spent the entire previous day working on a two-hour task and still maybe haven't even figured it out, well then you just feel... bad? Bad? No, bad doesn't really begin to describe it. You begin to maybe get a little bit anxious. You're very stressed out. You feel incompetent because you're the developer being paid to do a particular job and complete this particular task and it says it was estimated to com be completed in two hours and you spent six hours doing it the day before and you still haven't even completed it. It's like if you have to present something in front of the entire class that you know you didn't do and the whole entire class knows you failed but at work you're not only worried about what your classmates think of you or your teacher thinks of you or your grade but the stability of your job, your livelihood. I mean, you tried, but you just couldn't successfully complete the task. It is an incredibly stressful feeling that I hated every second of when that would happen to me. And honestly, it could just be because I felt like my team were genius programmers. I mean, in their defense, they kind of were. They had 20 years experience each under their belt. So yeah. Needless to say, I was a little bit intimidated by them, even though they were incredibly nice and helped me out. Even with those traits, I still felt that way. With that being said, I couldn't even begin to think about having a boss or a team that just like is mean or opposite of that. That would suck. But you know, maybe you're a better programmer than me. Maybe that stuff never happens to you. So you never have to feel that way. I don't know. I can tell you my experiences and mishaps all I want, but at the end of the day, many things cannot be learned from other people's mistakes. Oftentimes, you have to make the mistake, or in this instance, you have to experience that situation in order to understand what it actually feels like, and maybe you thrive in those situations, maybe you hate those situations, but you'll never know until you're in it. 
It kind of reminds me of an analogy. It's like whenever you're at a restaurant and the waiter hands you your food and they say, oh, it, you know, hot plate. So they put it on your table, but you got to see just how hot that plate is. So you touch it. Sometimes you got to figure things out for yourself. On the job, the amount of coding that is expected from you is typically around six hours. This is how they base it on tasks. So if you have a two hour task, a three hour task, and a one hour task, you can complete that in one day, but you can't complete another two hour task on top of that for the eight hours a day because you have stand up, you have meetings, you have breaks. All of that ties in to your eight hour day. So don't go in expecting that you're gonna be coding for eight hours a day. Typically, what your team should expect is around six. Now, if you've seen my video, how long I code a day, you will see that I'm typically burnt out around four hours. So an extra two is a lot to handle, but it also depends on the work at hand. I've spent eight, 10 hours almost straight. You know, I have to eat and go to the bathroom and stuff, but basically almost straight coding. And when I say coding, that is basically by the definition that I laid out in that video, how long I code a day. And that is including everything from research to actually typing out your code. But that's when I'm working on something simple or fairly straightforward, something that's already been laid out. But when you have to figure out how to code something that has never been done in your language, in your stack, in your context, well, then it makes things quite a bit more difficult. More brain power is needed to figure out the logic. You have to figure out how to use it in your language, with your stack, in your context. And the more brain power you use, the more energy you use, and the quicker you get burnt out. Now, I don't mean burnt out in how you've been hearing it a lot lately, but just on that day, more brain power is needed to figure out the logic and to implement it in your language, using your stack, and in your exact context. And the more brain power you use, the more drained you get, and you're just tired. I've said this before, how individuals who work hard labor will never understand the mental drain that it takes to do our job because it's not physically difficult. And the best way I can describe the difference between those eight to 10 hour coding days and the four hour coding days, it's like digging a little hole with a little shovel for eight hours a day compared to digging a giant hole with a real shovel. You're still digging, coding, but one is much more taxing. And I've found a fine balance of being able to figure out when, I've, when I'm at my wits end for that day. If I'm working on something a little bit more difficult, then maybe I'm in there three to four hours, don't need to worry about anything else at hand that needs to be done, I'll save that for another day. But if I wanna relax and I wanna do a little bit easier work and nothing too, too mentally draining, then I can do that too and I can work as long as I want on my own projects. But when you're at work, you're expected to do six hours a day, give or take, whatever your company wants you to do. If you have to do more, then the Lord help you. It's like all coding work is treated equally when it's not equal. Some tasks are a lot easier than others, but if you have a lot of difficult tasks to do one day, it's hard to hit six hours of coding on difficult tasks. That is one of the downfalls when it comes to working in a professional environment. And that's the entire premise of what I wanted to discuss here in today's video, not to to bring anyone away from being a software engineer, but rather show you some of the realities that others do not. On the outside, you see typing, you see this wonderful app that they created, but you never see what goes on in the meetings. You never see what goes on in their heads when they're actually doing this work and the difficulty of it and the nuances and differences of working as a professional developer than just as a hobby developer. I hope you learned something from today's video, but more so I hope you give it a little bit more thought into the potential career that you're looking at based on the reality of it and not how it's portrayed. It's a fun job at times, but it feels like it can be the worst job too. Let me know if you've had a similar experience in the field or if you've had a different experience in the field, completely opposite of how I feel because at the end of the day, this is just one man's opinion, one man's view and experiences that I'm sharing and that's mine. I can't really speak from anybody else's point of view, so I'd love to hear some of y'all current software developers on y'all's experience, what you agree with, what you disagree with down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, and enjoy yourself some Icy Puck coffee from Cometeer, and I'll see y'all in the next one.